an opinion about it. I have to have a feeling about it. And I have to be able to take this pen or this pencil and put it on a piece of paper to express it in such a way that someone looking at what I've done will also like that. It's very important. Now, if you get into animation itself and you want to move things around, again, you're up against the same problem. Get an opinion. Put the pencil down, first of all. Don't even draw until you first close your eyes and look on that little screen inside your head and say, what is it I'm seeing? Okay, I see a dog and the dog is running. What's the dog running like? Oh, he's sad. Oh, he's running and he's sad. What's he running sad about? Oh, he just heard that the little pups that he has at home that are his own children don't have any food. He's running to town to get him some food. So I go through all that thought process. And once I see that in my head on the screen, I'll say, wait a minute, let me look at it once again. Mm, oh, yeah. Once I've got that, now I pick up the pencil. And then I draw it on the piece of paper, maybe in what I call little thumbnails. And a thumbnail is just simply a tiny, tiny little drawing on a piece of paper that gives me the idea. It's like notes. And as I put those down, they're usually about the size of your thumb, and no one knows what they are but you. But draw your little thumbnails. Having drawn the thumbnails, look at them and study them and see if they say exactly what thank you see if they say exactly what you saw on the little screen in your mind and if they do then you proceed to animate the scenes now animation can be done in many many ways there's so many styles of it if i'm drawing a dog i can draw a very modern dog and i'll give you an example of that Here's the worried dog running home. Now that's a style of drawing which actually is very, very uh, economical. It's minimal, it isn't realistic, and it's a symbol for a dog running home. And that will have a certain look on the screen and it's more fanciful and easy to look at. If I actually wanted to draw a realistic dog, then that has another style. So I have to determine in my mind, what is it I want the audience to see? Is it a real picture of a dog? Do I want them to uh, see a symbol of a dog? Is it just for fun? A lot of that decision making has to do with whether or not I want the audience to look at this picture I'm making for an hour or I just want to hold their attention for a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes, they can look at this kind of dog easy. But if I want to hold their attention for one hour, I usually draw something a little more realistic. And that realistic view of an animal will hold them because there's going to be something more behind than just a dog. It's going to be a story. And the story is what holds all of our attention. In fact, when I was a kid, I always loved the fact when my parents would come to me and say, Don, just sit down. I'm going to tell you a little story. Boy, they have my attention every time. Story is what gets us. I think it was back in 1956. I worked at the Disney studio and Walt Disney was still there and alive and healthy and happy and was making Disneyland and everything was going quite well in the Magic Kingdom. And I was only 18 years old at the time and uh, a long life dream. I always wanted to work there and to work for what we called affectionately Uncle Walt. Well, I worked there for one year and we were making a picture called Sleeping Beauty. It turned out to be a wonderful picture. But at the same time, Walt was making uh, a secret project of his, and it was called Disneyland. We didn't know what that was going to be, but we knew that he spent most of his time outside the studio making this amusement park. And I used to think amusement park, and that's a carnival. Aren't those kind of messy, dirty places, you know, where, where a lot of sailors go and there's amusement rides and everything? And one day he corrected all of us, and he said, it isn't an amusement park. It's called a theme park. Again, there's that old idea that comes into play. It isn't just the machines and all the rides. It's a theme that underlies it, or the thought. So, I stayed there at Disney Studio during that year, and Disneyland was finished and completed, and then I left the studio and went and did so many other things. Like many youth, I became restless. I wanted to travel. I needed to go back and finish college, and I majored in English. Um, I had a theater for a while. We're actually employed actors and we put on musical comedies. So I learned a little bit about that. And then I just played. So one day when I got out of college, I said, what will I be? Certainly not an English teacher. 
I said, I know what, I'll just go earn some money and pay my rent for a while, so more play. And I went to work at a place called Filmation, which made horrible things, but I didn't know that. And we made things called uh, Archina's Friends, Groovy Ghoulies, uh, Sabrina, just great things. Anyway, um, one day I was working away there and I woke up and I said, you know what, what I'm making is really not very good, it's not helping anybody, it's sort of like junk food, and maybe I need to get better. How can I get better, and if I'm going to be an animator, if that's my job in life, why don't I be the best one? So I called up Disney Studio and I said, if you're willing, I would like to join your training program and come over and learn how to animate. They said, sure. So I went over there and I took a test. It was an eight-week test and learned to animate some scenes. What they basically did is very much like Rumpelstiltskin. It wasn't any school at all. They put you in a room, they gave you paper and pencils and a desk and they said, animate. Don't do it. And they shut the door. <laughs> and I said, well, okay, fine. Spin the straw into gold. I'll try it. And um, for eight weeks, I just simply animated characters doing this and that, whatever. And then I showed it to him after the eight weeks, and they said, great, you're going to animate for us on Robin Hood. So we made Robin Hood. And at the end, I was so excited doing Robin Hood. I thought, wow, finally I'm a Disney animator. This is terrific. I'm loving this. And, you know, a lot of people are going to see what I do. And every night I snuggled in my bed and grinned because it was all coming true, this dream. Uh, when I saw Robin Hood, the first time I saw it, it was all in color. And I looked at it and I was greatly disappointed. And I said, why isn't it the wonderful thing and feeling that I had when we made Snow White? I wasn't even there during Snow White. But, you know, why doesn't I feel that it was as great a picture? or Pinocchio. And then I said, you know what, it's because there's something missing and I think it's the heart or the story and maybe it's Walt. He wasn't there. So next picture, we said, we're going to do a better job. And the next picture was Rescuers and we turned everything around and we talked and we talked and we talked and got the story better. Um, and then it turned out that it still didn't look as good, although it was a little better picture. And gradually, each one of the pictures seemed to be an, an enormous effort, but never got better. So at some point, we said, what we need to do is we need to learn how to make better pictures. And the studio itself, Disney Studio, was a very corporate image at that point, a very corporate machine. And I said, uh, I'm not going to learn anything here. I need to experiment. That's where you learn everything, is experimenting. So I said, we'll go to my garage. I have room there. Take all my friends, and we'll experiment. So we experimented and made a little film called Banjo the Woodpile Cat. Now it's only 26 minutes long, but it took us seven years to make it because we didn't know what we were doing. And every time we would come up against a question or a, a problem, we didn't know the answer to the problem, we said, well, okay, now we have the question. We write it down. We go back to the old animators at Disney's and we said, you didn't think to tell us this, but we have a question. And we'd ask the question. And then they would answer. Then we'd say, ah, that's great. We'd write it down, run back out to my garage, and we'd learn how to you know, do that new problem. Well, it progressed like that through several years. And finally, we produced this little film um, at great expense. It cost us, I think, nearly a million and a half dollars before we were done. And we'd spent all of stock options. We'd spent everything we had. But we believed in it enough to say, if we don't go through this process and learn our lesson, then we're never going to be able to help with the animation art. It won't grow. No one's going to be there to just hand it to us on a platter. We're going to have to learn. So we knew that. Um, consequently, same time this is going on, we would go back to work at Disney Studio and we would say, okay, now we'll apply all the things we're learning out here in this garage to the next picture we're doing here. And we applied them and the pictures started looking a little bit better. But we could never get at the real core of the problem, which was the pictures need to say something of value to the people watching them. Animation is not a baby rattle that you pick it up and you shake it like this to entertain children. It has to be something that a child will pick up, look at it, and go, oh, and discover something. So it's discovery. That's the thrill of life. And we couldn't fix that at Disney Studios. So we said to them, we will leave you now softly, we thought softly, and we'll go to another part of the world and we'll make our own animation pictures and we will then compete with you. Uh, we'll make the best ones we can, so you're going to have to make good ones too. And that's called competition. It will make you come out of stagnant 
waters. You'll do better work. We'll do better work because we think we're number two right now, but we're going to try and beat you. So it'll make you get strong. And that way, that competition, keep it friendly, please, on the screen, is going to create a germination which will make the whole animation business flourish. And other people, students like yourselves, that want to go into this business will have a place to go to work. Once we can make animation films make money, other producers will enter and there'll be more competitors. And it will be like a giant marathon. There's an interesting thing happening with All Dogs Go to Heaven at the timing of its new release. Isn't, isn't, didn't I hear today that, uh, that uh, Disney animation is coming out at the same time? Yes. Um, when we did The Land Before Time, Disney did a picture called Oliver and Company and released it head to head with ours on the very same day. And everyone went, oh no, oh no, this is terrible, this is terrible. And I said, oh no, no, this is terrific, this is terrific. What it means is, is that going head to head allows the two gladiators to go into the arena and let the spectators look. And each can flex their muscles and storm and parade around and show their feathers. And it seems like that's how they can compare. Many mothers, and I heard these stories countless times, mothers would pile all the kids, neighborhood kids in the, in the station wagon, go down to the theater, see Land Before Time, and there was a line. And the kids would go, oh, no, 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 no. The mother said, we're going back home. Oh, no, no, no. So the mother would say, okay, we'll go to the other one. So they would go over and see Oliver. And then the kids would, well, we didn't see Land. So I said, all right, we'll go back and see Land later on. And that same thing happened with mothers that went to see Oliver. So the two actually made a greater awareness among the population of the United States that animation is like movies. It's an art form. So there's a greater awareness. It increased that consciousness. And I think that was a tremendous thing. This year, uh, I mean, we're making a picture a year nowadays. And so we're trying to um, be number one, if we can be number one. That'll make them try harder. And this year we're going head to head once again on a picture called All Dogs Go to Heaven. You know what it, um, how can we make animation become more mature, how can it grow, flourish, and more young people can enter this. That's a very excellent uh, ambition. I would say that it takes money. Uh, the, the population, if they go to the theaters and they experience something wonderful there, they love what they see. And you know what, what's not to love? If you go see a beautifully animated film, you're going to be thrilled. And it seems to make a little mark in your head. You remember it your whole life long, and you love the experience. You'll go back again, either yourself or you'll take your own children. Number one is every producer that goes into this genre, the feature film, don't make a turkey. Now, I know no one sets out to make a bad film, but make sure that you make a successful one. Every bad film that comes along puts a nail in the coffin. So we don't need um, unsuccessful stories. We need lots of success stories. The Motion Picture Academy in the United States does not even recognize the animation feature. We are that group of people over in the corner that are somehow odd from the rest and don't really make motion pictures. And if we do, it's just for children. So I, I would think that the Motion Picture Academy somehow has to recognize this motion picture industry as part of their own industry. Uh, we need to have, again, successful profit profitable pictures so that the money then will be recognized uh, by the business community. They'll say, look, we want more animation pictures because they pay big money. Now that will open up jobs. That will open up new studios. That means young blood that right now, like yourselves, is ambitious to enter the market of animation will have a place to go to work. So it's going to take, if I can narrow that down, it's going to take an awareness of the public about animation and we need many people in there, not a monopoly. It's going to take profitable pictures, successful pictures. And I think it's going to take the Motion Picture Academy recognizing this. Animation is an art form that is a motion picture. And then eager young minds like yourselves with talent, eager to express it, to jump in and help us. Thank you very much. Stop.